Are you familiar with some of those classic Bible stories that most people learn when they're little kids? Stories like David and Goliath or Daniel and the lion's den. Well, today we're gonna take a closer look at one of those really popular stories and discover the incredible lesson that is hidden within. But you'll have to stay tuned to check it out. Well, what's up, Bible nerds? We are in this new series where we're re-examining some well-known Bible stories through the lens that the best way to read the Bible wisely is by remembering that Jesus is king and context is everything. What does that mean? Well, it means that the whole Bible is not actually about us. It's a story about Jesus that's meant to lead us to him and help us become more like him. And the context is the details about a text that give meaning to what we're reading. It helps us understand how a particular passage fits into the larger story that the whole Bible is telling. And it shows us what the author was saying to people then, which helps us understand what God is saying to us now. But what about all those kid stories in there? You know, the ones we were talking about at the beginning of this episode, the stories like David killing Goliath with a slingshot, or Daniel praying to God, getting thrown in a den of lions and somehow surviving. What do those have to do with our lives today? I think that's a really fair question. But remember, the whole Bible is intended to lead us to Jesus and help us become more like him. So when we read stories in scripture that at first glance don't make a lot of sense in our context, like cool story, bro, tell it at parties, AKA I don't care. We can have confidence in what Paul said in Romans 15. He said, for everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. So what if we read those familiar Bible stories in a new way and looked for what God was showing us about who he is and who we are and how we can follow Jesus more faithfully? Let's go ahead and try it. We're gonna start with the story of Noah and the ark. Now, if you don't know this one, let me give you that brief Sunday school overview. God came to Noah, told him a flood was coming, and he asked Noah to build a big boat called an ark for Noah, his family, and two of every kind of animal to enter and be saved from the flood. So Noah builds this giant boat, animals come aboard two by two, then the flood comes and it storms like crazy for 40 days and 40 nights. But Noah and his family and the animals are all kept safe on this ark. Eventually the flood recedes and they get out of the boat and they worship God and God puts a rainbow in the sky as a visual reminder of the promise he makes at the end of this story that he will never flood the earth again. Now, first of all, I need to say something right off the top. This is not a children's story. Guys, this is a story about evil taking over the world in a massive catastrophe that wiped out the entire population of people and animals. That's a lot. Like, it seems like God is massively overreacting here by pulling the clean slate protocol. And yet, when I was a little kid, my nursery had Noah's Ark wallpaper on the walls. And I played with a Noah's Ark toy that had this little boat and all these little animals that you could put inside. People. They were not going on a fun jungle cruise. They were escaping annihilation. Okay, you get the point. Now, what would it look like to read this story wisely? Well, you can find it in Genesis six through nine, and we're gonna look at a passage now to help us answer a few questions, but definitely go back and read the whole thing because it's really good. But the questions that I'm asking when I read this story are, what does this story tell us about God? And what does this story tell us about us, about people? Well, two things that this story tells us about God is thing number one, God is unwilling to give up on his creation. And two, God's justice is never without his mercy. And what does this story show us about us? Again, two big things. We're all part of the problem but we can all be part of the solution. So with that in mind, let's read starting in Genesis 6, verse 12. God saw how corrupt the earth had become, for all the people on earth had corrupted their ways. So God said to Noah, 
I'm going to put an end to all people, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I'm surely going to destroy both them and the earth. So make yourself an ark of cypress wood. Make rooms in it and coat it with pitch inside and out. This is how you are to build it. And then jumping down to verse 22, Noah did everything just as God commanded him. Now you have to try to imagine this with me. And it won't be pretty. Imagine a world filled with all of the worst kinds of criminals. The world was full of things like slavery, racism, human trafficking, murder, hate, gossip, exploitation, abuse, child sacrifice, and so much more. Did your chest just get heavy? Because those things were normal then, and they weren't the kind of stuff that you could get arrested for. But God is unwilling to give up on his creation. You can think about him like a doctor who steps in to perform an invasive surgery on a patient with cancer that's destroying their body. In the same way, through this flood, God performed surgery on his creation to address the cancer of sin that was destroying the world. So the flood wasn't an overreaction on God's part. It was actually the only appropriate response to the damaging effects of sin. And that means it was just. And God's justice is never without his mercy. Get this, theologians estimate that it probably took Noah between 50 and 120 years to build this ark that God had asked him to. That means there was at the very least half a century worth of opportunity for people to repent and receive God's mercy. Because God is patient and he's full of mercy. He doesn't want anyone to perish, but all to come to repentance. He wants everyone to embrace the mercy that he offers. So the story of Noah and the Ark invites us to wrestle with the justice and the mercy of God and to take comfort in the fact that he will never give up on us. It also challenges us to consider the fact that we all sin. Did anything on that list that I mentioned before stand out to you? Things like violence, gossip, or hate. Clearly none of us escape the damaging effects of this disease of self-centeredness we call sin. And yet this story shows us that from the very beginning, we have been invited to partner with God in his plan to rescue people from sin and restore the world. See, God invited Noah to build the ark and Noah obeyed. He responded with this confident trust in God. And today, Jesus is extending that same invitation to us, the invitation to trust. In fact, that's what the gospel, which is the good news about Jesus, is all about. John 3, 16 and 17 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save it through him. The gospel is the good news, that Jesus came to rescue us from sin and repair our relationship with God so that we can play a part in his plan to restore the world. And that's how the story about Noah and the ark can lead us to Jesus and invite us to become more like him. And this is just one example of how reading the Bible with that humility and wisdom and curiosity can help us discover truth about who God is and who we are. So how do we do this practically? Here's a couple of suggestions for you. Thing number one, ask these questions next time you read a familiar story. What does this show me about God? And what does it show me about people? How does this story lead me to Jesus? And how does it invite me to become like Jesus? And for another example of digging through a familiar story, uh, stay tuned and keep watching this series or go back and watch the previous Bible Nerds episode called Why Did God Ask Abraham to Sacrifice His Son? Are there any stories in the Bible that you're excited to look into this week? Any that you maybe have questions about? Well, I'd love to hear about what you're learning, so feel free to fill me in in the comments below. Because what I know is that every story, every seemingly random command or detail in scripture can teach us something. It can challenge us in some way, and it can actually encourage us to keep following Jesus when it's really hard. 
And that is pretty cool. So until next time, my friends, keep reading and stay nerdy.